10 Curious Aspects of Airplanes That You've Probably Always Wanted to Know Number 1. Is there a speed limit for airplanes? And what are its consequences? While driving on roads, most streets specify a speed limit. You cannot really have suspended warnings like that in mid-air, can you? However, aviation regulators specify speed limits for different situations. For instance, while flying at 10,000 feet or less, airplanes are allowed a maximum speed of 250 knots or 288 miles per hour. Most commercial flights fly much higher, at about 38,000 feet, at an average cruise speed of 575 miles per hour. There is no speed limit imposed at this altitude, although when an aircraft goes faster than 768 miles per hour, it breaks the sound barrier and creates a sonic boom. This can affect life below with abnormally loud sounds, and sometimes the pressure wave created even causes cracks in glass. Number 2. What happens if you don't put your phone on airplane mode on a flight? Many airplanes were built before electronic devices became mainstream. The electromagnetic waves from phones, tablets, electronic headsets, electronic watches, e-readers and others can potentially interfere with aircraft communication. You know that squeaky noise on an audio system when a mobile phone is nearby? That's what could happen if people leave devices on during a flight. Although it isn't much of a safety concern, it could be annoying for pilots and air traffic controllers. You surely don't want to be interfering with one of those people. Number 3. How high do planes fly? And what happens if a plane flies too high? Yes, there is a limit to how high airplanes can fly. Most commercial planes can fly as high as 38,000 feet. If a plane exceeds the height it was designed to fly at, that could destroy the aircraft. Insufficient oxygen at that altitude could lead to engine failure. In 2004, a Pinnacle Airlines flight carrying two crew members crashed after flying up to 41,000 feet. Number 4. What happens if you open the door during a flight? First of all, it would take a lot of strength to open an airplane door mid-flight. This is because the air pressure inside a commercial airplane while flying is much higher than the pressure outside. The higher the altitude, the more the difference in pressure. However, if someone did manage to open the door, the pressure would eject the people standing close to it. Sometimes, it could even damage the airplane and it could begin to come apart. Number 5. What causes turbulence? Is it dangerous? Turbulence is common while flying. It is actually caused by a change in airflow. Air turbulence can occur because of changes in wind speed, thunderstorms, and flying over mountain ranges or tall buildings that distort the air overhead or even a combination of these factors. Usually, turbulence is quite harmless. Very few turbulence-related injuries have been reported and even fewer deaths. In fact, an American research report claims that you are 26 times more likely to die on a roller coaster than by airplane turbulence. Number 6. What happens when a plane loses cabin pressure? When an aircraft's cabin pressure drops, the temperature dips and there is a reduction in oxygen levels. That's what the oxygen masks are for. A sudden depressurization can lead to injuries like ear or nosebleeds, nausea, headaches, and even blackouts because of a lack of oxygen. Usually, pilots will descend to a lower altitude to provide the plane's occupants with warmer and more oxygenated air when cabin pressure drops. Number 7. Why do airplanes still have ashtrays when smoking is prohibited? Smoking on domestic airplanes has been prohibited in the United States since the 1990s. This was extended to international flights in 2000. Yet all lavatories on flights are mandated to have ashtrays because aircraft regulators do not want to take a chance. In case a passenger does decide to break the law, there needs to be a safe place to put it out. Number 8. Why do airplane windows have tiny holes? If air pressure varies inside and outside an airplane, 
then won't the tiny holes in flight windows wreak havoc? The United States Federal Aviation Association assures they won't. Airplane windows actually consist of three separate panes. The outer pane is the one that protects against the difference in air pressure. The inner pane is usually just a protection for the middle and outer ones. The middle pane has the tiny hole called the bleed hole, which balances the air pressure. It also helps with releasing moisture and keeps the plane from fogging or frosting. Number 9. What are those little hooks on airplane wings? If you have ever been seated next to the airplane wing, you may have noticed it has a little hook on it. These are crucial safety features. In the event of an emergency landing, the hooks can be used to tether ropes to them. Passengers can use this rope to aid in descending from the overwing exits if need be. Without the rope, you could slip and fall on the wing while trying to evacuate. Number 10. How far can a plane fly if all its engines fail? Most airplanes can glide for an average of 20 to 30 minutes even if all engines fail. At an altitude of about 36,000 feet, it would be able to travel about 70 miles before landing. Air passing over the wings and the aerodynamics of the plane allow this to happen. In 2001, Air Transat Flight 236's engines lost power right over the Atlantic Ocean. Despite that, the airplane continued to glide and the pilot made a successful landing at Lajes Air Base about 19 minutes later. Chances are, if you've ever flown, your flight might have glided at some point, and you've made it out alive. That must be a relief for all you jittery flyers. If you are enjoying watching our videos, please don't forget to like, comment, and share.